Hi, my name's Isaac, and welcome to my channel, ChefDev. Um, I'm just doing a quick update on my third-person camera. Um, I've been working on this for a little while now. I've started out working on a 3D controller, sort of similar to games like The Legend of Zelda. Uh, so that's everything. You've got movement, you've got combat, all those kind of things. But I spent a lot of time working on the camera and I thought it would be a good idea to split that out and have it as a separate asset that I could use in any project. You know, um, this 3D controller that I'm working on is going to be heavily focused towards adventure games, but there's a lot of other situations where I might want a camera like this. Uh, so I thought it was a great opportunity to pull it out, learn a bit more about how cameras work and sort of fine tune it a lot more. The one that I had written was very integrated into the character, so pulling that out was quite challenging. As you can see from the video, it moves pretty well. There's not many issues with it. You can switch to an automatic follow mode where the camera will just follow you around and then you can take over and control it and target the enemy. Um, so everything in this works really well. The camera system that I had designed for my original 3D adventure game template uh, was really heavily integrated into the uh, actual character. So it wasn't as simple as just pulling out those nodes and putting in a new project and saving it and calling it a day. Um, I had to really think about how I could set this up where I could just drag and drop it into a, any given scene and just link up the main character that the player was going to operate and just going from there. I wanted it to be clean and simple so that you didn't have to think too much about it, maybe tweak it through a few variables um, and just sort of plug and play. Okay, let's have a look at the node setup for this particular camera rig. Um, we've got uh, essentially a parent node called the 3D camera rig uh, and right in that is the tween that we're going to use to keep up with the character controller, um, the follower, which is essentially the the back node in red, and what's that going to do is basically when you're controlling the camera, it's doing nothing except holding the camera in place, and when you're in the automatic follow node, it's going to get decoupled from the uh, 3D camera rig and set as top level, and then basically just look from a position predefined in code. And all that has is a tween basically to help it uh, do that and the camera and its tween so that we can zoom with another one. Now I'm not uh, super experienced with this engine yet. I've only been doing it for a year. I don't know if I only need one tween or if I need one for each uh, property that I'm interpolating from. So I've got to set up this way. It could be simpler, maybe. Uh, if you guys know, just let me know in the comments. So yeah, you can see that the rotation is basically fixed. And it, like with this setup, you don't have to know where the camera is because it's going to be a child in this node setup, which makes it really easy. We just have to focus on getting the rotation right. Okay, so overall, this uh, 3D camera rig, um, it's not super different from any other camera controller that you might look at on YouTube or if you're looking at it just in Google or whatever. Um, you can get a pretty quick mouse movement. It's basically the same every time you set up a node as top level and you control the rotation of that. Um, what I wanted to do differently was basically combine the two. So I've got a method to update the position of this because it's completely decoupled from the controller and that's how we want it to be if we want it to, you know, just be able to drop it into any given project without having to do too much setup. So all you have to do when you bring it into a scene is, you know, click on camera target in the script var variables and set that target and it'll just keep up based in code with this track update function. Um, so there's that. 
um, which is just a tween moving the translation essentially. Um, and, and the one thing that I was able to do with that is essentially have a function that modulated the jump height so that it wasn't following along exactly the same, which smooths it out a lot. So I didn't like it when it was basically jumping at the same speed that it was following along. I thought it looked a lot better when it was a little bit smoother. Um, I did experiment a little bit with um, having it not update until you actually got to the next platform. So the camera wouldn't even move until you got up to the next level or whatever. But the issue I was having with that is that if you jumped, it essentially would say, hey, don't look at the, um, the Y axis change until you hit the ground again. But if you're jumping off a high platform, um, that's not helpful because the camera won't even follow along with you. And I couldn't find a way uh, to detect whether or not you had fallen past a certain point uh, reliably. So I just canned that idea and had it smoothed out at half the speed, which I think looks pretty good. It's way simpler to implement. Um, so that was that. Uh, and the other thing that I had to do in order to make this work together, because we've got two camera systems essentially, is um, reset the rotation of the parent node, the 3D camera rig node, to match the follower node when it's in follow mode. That way, when you decouple it, and go back to the manual mode, the rotations match. And so you don't get any weird mismatch. It'll just let, you know, come off all right where you left off, which I think looks really good. Um, and it should work in all modes. If it doesn't, you know, reach out, let me know. Let's take a look at um, setting this up on a separate project. So if you've downloaded this off, uh, itch.io you'll have uh, you know 3d camera dash zip just extract that uh, any way you like open up the project you want to bring it into and just right click open in file manager yeah we just need this 3d camera folder we don't want the uh, project and dot import and all that kind of stuff okay so once that's in your project just let it import a second. So I'm using the uh, the platformer 3D as an example here. This should just be listed. If you can, if you don't have it listed in your project files, just um, have a look in the templates section of the Godot Engine startup page. Yeah. So this this node here, we want to basically remove this. We're not going to need it. So we remove that. We'll just jump over back into the main scene here um, let's just collapse a few of these make it a bit easier to look at so drag and drop the 3d camera rig into the project just put it in the the root scene directory okay once you've done that in the camera target script variable just select the character controller and uh, if you're using a character controller, you're going to have to make the camera rig have editable children so right click scroll down to where it says editable children just click on that and find the camera in in the tree and just right click and copy node path in this particular project you want to find uh, the location where they're referencing the node for the camera and just replace it with uh, this path here otherwise this isn't going to work I've got uh, var cam base equals get node now we're going to need to get parent dot get node uh, because it's not a child of this particular node. So paste that in and just put in the front here, get parent and that's it. It should just work as normal. Hit play. Okay. And you can see that the, um, the rig's just a little bit too zoomed out for this project, uh, but it is working, so that's positive. So we can fix that. So what you want to do is, in these camera zoom, min zoom, max zoom variables, you want to uh, essentially set them to be whatever you want them or whatever you think they need to be, like whatever's appropriate in the project. Um, so for this um, template, I find what I found 
looks best is the minimum zoom to be 3.3, the maximum zoom to be 7.7 and the original point to be 5. Um, that looks all right. So we're going to make those changes and then all you have to do in the, in the camera rig is just change the followers distance, camera distance to match those. And there you go, it looks a little bit more appropriate. Now in order to get the, so yeah, you can see that we're moving around, no problems. The camera's a bit low, you can probably fix that. It'll just depend on your project. So to get the rest of the functionality working, we're going to need to pick up the the input. Uh, so in the input map, you want to drop in action target and make the key or anything you want. For me, it's tab um, and that'll work. And then the other thing that we need right away is uh, the mouse zoom. So find where it says, find the zoom function in the code. If you want that to mouse scroll up and mouse scroll down, and we're just going to add those keys. And once you have that, those two functions will work. And if you want joystick functionality, it's built in. So you just have to find those and add them to your project as well. And it'll work just fine. Uh, in the example project, I have them all set up. So if you want to just rip that out and build your project from that, it's fine too. As you can see, the zoom is working. Okay, so if you want the automatic targeting to work, you're gonna to need to change whatever you want to target, collision layer to the second layer. Um, just make sure that they're still gonna collide with the world. Otherwise, you're gonna end up with some struggles like here, you can see that we just fall straight through. Um, so you can do that either by just including them both on the first layer, you know, or you can just make your world collide on the second layer as well. Once you've done that, they should both interact with the world and interact with the area on this node. You can see the icon's just a little bit too big, but you've got both, um, both things in frame and uh, the enemy in focus. Um, You'll have to probably change the collision size to match whatever's in your project. I think it's a bit big because everything was a little bit oversized for this when I brought it in so it can detect enemies like all the way across the map, but it's, and that's all you had to do. So I think that's pretty good. Okay guys, that's it from me. I have hoped you've gotten something out of this and um, if you want the project, just head on over to my page on itch.io to download it. Uh, feel free to let me know if there's any improvements you think I could make. I'm still relatively new to this whole world of uh, game development, so um, I'm, I'm pretty sure there is plenty of improvement. I'm gonna keep developing this kind of thing and making videos on it um, just as it's mostly educational for myself. Um, I find it really helpful to talk through these things. It helps me think about it. it, helps me improve the the actual template or project that I'm working on. Oh, if you want um, more detail on this project and how I made it, um, I can dive into the code. I could do a, a entire series on how to build something like this. Um, just let me know in the comments, like and subscribe, and I'll be motivated to give you more. All right, I'll see you in the next video.